Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to talk about chainsaw safety and tell you guys the story of how I ended up in the emergency room from a chainsaw accident. So there are a few basic things that everyone repeats about chainsaw safety that are true, but I think there's a lot of other things that maybe get overlooked, especially that could be helpful to someone who is new to running a saw or maybe someone who's been running a saw a long time but's gotten careless. So we're gonna start off with the most obvious thing you could think of, which is wearing proper protective gear. And we're gonna go over the protective gear, but I also wanna say that I think wearing safety gear is only 10 or maybe 20% of chainsaw safety. You can't just put on some gear and say, now it doesn't matter, I can be careless with all of these other tips. So the first thing is hearing protection. In almost all of my videos, I'm running some type of equipment, whether that is a tractor or a chainsaw or a sawmill or a weed eater or something. And I actually get criticized quite a bit for when I don't wear hearing protection. And it's a good idea to wear it anytime you're running equipment, but not all of this equipment is the same decibel level. I have a video where I checked the decibel level, which is just how loud something is, on all of my power equipment. And the chainsaw, was over twice as loud, if you think about how the decibel rating system works, the chainsaw was over twice as loud as a tractor. You have to wear hearing protection if you're running a saw, especially a big saw like this 500i. Hearing protection is a must. Eye protection is also a must. And you can wear that type of hearing protection with some safety glasses. That is one suitable option. But if you're cutting anything overhead, you really need to have a helmet or a hard hat on. I've cut a bunch of trees down and only once has something fallen on me, but boy does it get your attention when that happens. The branch that fell on me was about that big around. Just a, like a little five pound thing it felt like. It was fairly long, but I was cutting a tree, that branch fell, hit me in the head. It felt like someone had walked up behind me and hit me over the head with a shovel. My neck hurt for a week. And that was a little tiny branch. So having a hard hat like this on when you're felling trees and looking up to see what's happening above you is critically important. I just basically wear this all the time when cutting because it also stops debris from hitting you in the face. So when I'm running a saw, I've learned one of these tips we'll get to later is to stand with your face a little bit offset from the chain, but you're going to have stuff fly up and hit you in the face, so why not cover all your basics with face protection, hearing protection, fall protection in one item. Now a big one, chaps. These will stop a chainsaw in most cases, and it can happen quick that that chain kicks, that chainsaw kicks back or sideways on you, hits your leg, it will go through you like a knife through butter, and these will stop a saw pretty quickly. I've done a test with a big saw and a medium saw and an electric saw. We strapped a pair of chaps around a tree and we hit it with the saw and they work. And it's a little bit of a hassle, especially if it's hot outside, it's a little bit of a hassle to wear those chaps, but it's also kind of a hassle to cut your leg off. So I don't recommend it. So now we've followed all of the common safety practices and we still have arms and torso and all kinds of exposed areas where we can get hurt. Toes, you know, I recommend wearing a steel-toed boot, but that's not necessarily gonna save you unless it's got metatarsal support built into the boot. So you can go all in and get all the protective gear you want, but it still really matters following the rest of these guidelines. So now we're all geared up and we've got our chainsaw, it's time to start it up. When I really started running chainsaws, I saw some other people do the throw technique, where you basically, you're holding your chainsaw in one hand and your pull rope in the other, and you basically throw the saw while you pull the rope. It gives it momentum, it makes it easier to pull start. It's also not safe. If that engine doesn't crank or it cranks and you lose control, it's a good way to have an accident. There are two recommended ways to start a saw. You can either set it on the ground, put your foot, right through the handle and hold it down that way, then put your hand on the body of the saw and pull start it, 
or I use the between the legs method, which is actually recommended by the manufacturer. So you're gonna pinch the saw between your legs here. It's not uncomfortable. You're gonna hold the saw with your other hand. Now you've got, it's secure. It's not going anywhere. Then you reach across and pull. So people have given me a hard time about why do you start the saw with it between your legs like that? Because the manufacturer said so. And I don't always follow the rules, but in this case, I thought if that's what they recommend, why don't I try it? I've been throwing the saw to start it. So why don't I try doing it the way they recommend? I did not like doing it on the ground. That was awkward and uncomfortable. And I felt like when it started, there was more of a chance of having the chain turn and hit the ground and I didn't like it. So what I do is the between the legs method and I found it to be really comfortable and convenient and it's easy to pull. So I just like using that method. So now we've got our saw running. I wanna talk about something that a lot of the old timers will disagree with, but I feel really strongly about this one. And that is the chain break. I actually had someone watch my videos and say, at least you're not one of those people who engages the chain break anytime they're not cutting. I said, well, you must have missed some details in there, or maybe I was lazy that day or whatever, but I sure as heck am. Because I think the most dangerous time with the chainsaw might be when you're not cutting, when you're carrying it around. And it's natural, especially if you're, if you're cutting one log, it's a little different. But if you're running this saw all day to say, I make my cut, now I'm carrying the saw like this with my finger on the trigger and no chain break. Now what happens if I catch my foot on something and trip, my finger hits that and I'm stumbling into a running saw. So I finished my cut. It is not difficult. I'm cutting, cutting, cutting. I'm done. Pop the chain brake on, getting ready to cut. It's just a habit now. Just pop it back. It's not that hard. Now, if you're new to chainsaws and you don't know what that does, the chain brake physically stops the chain from turning. And the reason it's where it is, is in a case of a kickback, if you're cutting and the saw comes towards you, what's gonna happen is it's going to hit your arm anyway. I'm holding it up in an unnatural position, but if you're down here cutting, when that kicks back, your arm is going to hit that and stop it before the chain can come up and hit you. When I was a kid, my grandpa cut firewood and had a sawmill, and that's what he did for a living. And he never had chaps or a helmet or any of the rest of this. He didn't have a saw with a chain break. And I've talked to old guys since then we're like, you know, I'm not doing all that. I won't, I don't engage my chain break or those things are stupid. I just take them off the saw. I'm telling you what, if you ever cut yourself with a chainsaw, you might think about it different. And hopefully you've got the opportunity to think about it different. And I was lucky in that regard. So I was just talking about what can go wrong if you've got your finger on the trigger and you don't set the chain break. So set your chain break. Take your finger off of the trigger when you carry your saw, if it's running. And then the next thing is, in my made up scenario there, we tripped on a limb or some weeds or a rock or something. Clear your work area. That's a big one. So I was doing it yesterday. We cut up a big log and it was surrounded by brush. Property owner was going to clear all the brush after we left. He just wanted us to get the log. It was too big of a log for him to deal with. So I'm like, I don't want to waste my time messing with this little stuff. And I walk around and I'm getting ready to cut and I'm, I'm positioning my feet in between two sticks. And I thought, what if this rolls towards me? Which is a hazard we'll get to in a minute. What if this rolls and I'm trying to step away from it and I catch my foot on this and I fall with a running saw? Like, it's just not smart. So we took an extra 15 minutes. I cut some of that up and we cleared all that debris out of the way. It's worth taking the time. And I understand some of you are trying to make a living doing this. It's worth it. Just clear your work area. And if you're cutting down a tree, make sure you have an escape path that is not tangled with debris and tree and vines and weeds and anything like that. Clear the area. The next piece of advice, Use a sharp chain. There's an old saying that 
a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. And the first time someone said that to me, I'm like, that's ridiculous. If I slip with a dull knife, probably won't cut myself. If I slip with a sharp knife, I'll be hurt pretty bad. But if you really think about it, with a dull knife, you're pushing too hard and you're, you're more likely to make a mistake where you can be under control with a sharp knife. Same thing with the chainsaw. If you're in that cut for 45 seconds with a dull chain when a sharp chain would have done it in 10 seconds, you're pushing hard, you're working it back and forth, you're wearing yourself out, all this stuff. Get a sharp chain, make a clean cut. I've had a bad habit over the last few years of saying, well, this chain needs sharpened, but it's still cutting. I'll go ahead and finish what I'm doing and then sharpen it. And it's a bad idea. Just stop and sharpen the chain. My next point is don't be a hero. And I've made this mistake too, and I'm trying to learn. And maybe we can all learn together. Let's say you're someone who does not regularly use a chainsaw. You're not familiar with best practices. You're trying to learn whatever the case may be. Or maybe you, you borrowed a chainsaw because a tree fell in your yard and you feel like you need to deal with it. If you don't understand what you're doing, you need to get someone to come and show you and help you pay someone, whatever the case may be. If you're walking outside with a chainsaw, and this is how I got hurt. If you're walking outside with a chainsaw thinking, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I guess I have to do it. It's a bad idea. So don't be a hero. Second one that's kind of related is take your time. This is one I got from Buck and Billy Ray, and he was talking about tree felling. So he'll make his face cut, he'll go halfway through his back cut, then he'll just stop, back up, you know, talk to the camera in his case, because he's making videos, and just takes his time. And he says, is there a hazard I've missed here? Are the cuts I'm making lined up? Is this going to fall the way I thought it was? Step back away from it, look it over. I did that on the tree I was cutting yesterday. It's a big log. It's kind of on a bunch of stuff. So there were hazards of it. One end looked like it wanted to roll this way. The other end wanted to roll the other way. And I got my saw started and I walk up there and I'm getting ready to make a cut. And I'm like, I ask myself, have you thought about everything that could go wrong here? Have you really considered the hazards that you're putting yourself in? And there were two people there with me that were helping me do the work. And I just, I was getting ready to make the cut, and I just shut the saw off, set all my stuff down, and just stood there. And they're like, what's wrong? I said, nothing's wrong. I want to think about the hazards. What hazards do you guys see here? Which way is that going to roll? What's going to happen when I make these cuts? So take your time and think about each cut. Now, as you're thinking about the cuts, you need to make sure that you understand how compression and tension work within a log or a piece of wood you're dealing with so that you can anticipate what's going to happen. So I've got an entire video on this I'll share at the end about compression and tension. And if you've got a log that is hanging up in the air, this end's on the ground, this end is not touching anything. Then if you were to cut that, which way does it go? Like this. So you picture it falling like this. The bottom is under compression. The wood at the bottom is being compressed. The wood at the top is being stretched. So this is compression. This is tension. Anytime you make a cut, you there are cuts where you can cut straight through, but a lot of times you're going to cut halfway from one side and finish from the other side. And in those cases, you always cut the compression first. So if you cut the top first, it can, depending on how much weight's hanging out, it can rip out and pull and swing into you, and there's different issues with just making a, your cut from one direction. So if you cut from compression first, as you make your cut, the tree loses strength, it starts to sag like this, it's going to pinch your board, and then you're stuck and you got a problem. So what you want to do is cut halfway through your compression, or a little less than halfway, so it's still got strength. Now, as you make your cut from the top, and it gives, your cut at the top is opening. Same thing if your log is suspended on both ends. Now what's going to happen if you cut it in the middle? It's going to fall like this. So now your top is compression. Your bottom is tension. In that case, you'd cut halfway through the top, then start your cut from the bottom. 
So you need to understand compression and tension. And if you don't, maybe you're not ready to handle cutting up a big tree right now. Maybe you need to go back to the drawing board or get someone to help you out. So don't be a hero. Make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. So now we've talked about kickback and chain breaks and what happens if the saw kicks back to you, towards you. Well, why would the saw kick back towards you? That brings us to the next part. Let me grab a saw real quick. We've got this saw right here. Where is, on this saw, where's the best place to use as a cutting edge? You wanna cut right here next to the base of the saw. As, as it's coming around, it's pulling itself into the wood. It's the most secure, it's close to you, you've got control of it better. If you look at the tip of the bar, this is part of the chain is moving this way and this part is moving that way and it switches on the nose. So when you're cutting with the nose, you can have pressure on the bottom and then it switches and now your pressure is pulling the saw the other way. You don't want to cut with the nose of the saw any more than you have to. Now I do bore cuts sometimes, plunge cut, where you've got a log right here and you're cutting straight into the log with the nose of the saw. You can do that, there are applications for it, but the way I do it when I'm making a bore cut, so they'll say this is my palm of my hand is a standing tree, let's, let's visualize it that way. I'll probably put a demonstration on the screen, but you wanna come in with your chain like this. This is the tip of the bar. You come in at a 90 degree angle, get into the wood and then rotate out till you're 90 degrees and you don't rotate out until the nose of the saw is buried in the wood. Once the nose is buried, it can't kick back at you. So if you ever see someone boring directly into the wood, that's the technique. It feels safe and under control to me. I do it all the time, but it feels safe and in control because I understand the technique and the right way to do it. Let's talk about some situations that can be dangerous that aren't your fault or the chainsaw's fault, but just are based on the material you're cutting. So if you're cutting a big log or any size, it doesn't matter what size, I worry more sometimes with the bigger logs, but it, any size wood can get you. A small piece of wood, the saw can throw the piece of wood at you and jerk your chainsaw. So. The, the small pieces are dangerous too, and with those, you've got to brace it in some way, hold it with your foot, do something to hold that piece of wood still. But if you're dealing with a really big log, you really have to be concerned that when you cut it, what if it rolls towards you? What if you're on a hill? What if it has pressure on one side but not the other? What if it has a limb as a kickstand and you're removing that? You have to always be conscious that the wood can roll into you. That's where I was talking about take your time. What will happen when I make this cut? What's keeping that log from rolling? Is it sitting on flat ground and it's irregular shape and it would never roll? Or is part of it in the air? What's going to happen? You need to think all that through. Make sure that you're, it's going to roll away from you. What I did with the tree yesterday was I knew that log was kind of teetering in a precarious place where it could move. I took big firewood rounds and I sat next to it on each side like a wheel chalk so that after I made my cut, it could not roll towards me. I really didn't even want it rolling away. So I blocked it up with, with firewood rounds. Another real dangerous situation is cutting over your head. If you have to reach up here, especially with the bigger saw, you're out of control. And avoid, any time you can, avoid cutting above your head. And sometimes you don't have a choice, but you just really wanna be cautious about that and make sure you're wearing a helmet if you have to cut above your head. Another fact you might not have considered is that the only way to get hurt is not getting hit by a moving chain or crushed by a log. There are plenty of other ways to injure yourself. One is a back injury just from overworking yourself in uncomfortable positions. If you're not used to working long days on projects like this, or even if you are, Make sure to stop and take a break sometimes. It can injure your back. Another part of that is what I consider an unconventional safety practice that I learned, once again, from Buck and Billy Ray. Love him or hate him. I'm a big fan. He says, stand up and buck. 
and I didn't get it. He always says, stand up and buck. Use a long bar. But isn't a longer bar more dangerous and harder to control? I do think it's safer to use a long bar on small wood. And the way I found this out was I was cutting up some small logs that were on the ground. I thought this is a, I always use my 500i with a 25 inch bar. I thought I'll go get a small chainsaw. I've got a bunch of chainsaws. Small wood, small saw. So how do you cut small wood on the ground with a small char saw and a short bar? You bend down. You get down on your hands and knees, put one knee on the ground, or you're bending at the waist in an uncomfortable, unnatural working position while trying to hold this saw out in front of you. That's a good chance to create either a back injury or excessive fatigue. So I size my chainsaw bar to the fact that I can stand up straight, hold the bar, at a, hold the chainsaw in a comfortable position, and the bar comfortably reaches about this far from the ground. To me, I get my feet set wide apart, I get in a comfortable position, straighten my back, and cut like this. And to me, I'm, I'm less likely to get hurt that way. And that leads me to another way to get hurt. And I think I might have already mentioned it is work cutting while you're fatigued. I think the odds that someone who's experienced with a chainsaw and just comes out to make one cut, I've got criticized for saying before that I didn't put my chaps on because I'm just making one cut. People are like, oh, you, you know, that's terrible. Well, here's my thought process. If I'm making one cut, I know I'm only making one cut. I'm just getting started, I feel good, I'm getting myself in a good stance, I'm making my one cut, I'm putting the saw up. And I don't recommend that, always wear your chaps, but that was the thought process I had. But when you're more likely to get hurt is when you've been working for eight hours outside, you're exhausted, the saw is really getting heavy in your arms, and now you're being careless. When you get tired, when I get tired, I get careless. And carelessness is what's going to lead to an accident where you, you're leaving your finger on the trigger, you're not lifting your feet as high, and you stumble on something. You, you stop taking your other precautions. So that's why I think it's so important to not push through fatigue. That goes back to the concept of don't be a hero. Take a break. You know, you don't want to be running a chainsaw when you're exhausted. So now I promised you guys a story about finding myself in the ER. So it's probably 12 years ago, somewhere in that range. We had a house in town with just a few trees. I did not own a chainsaw. I would have been afraid to use a chainsaw like this because it's all, you know, it's big. I've I don't have experience, but I wanted to trim up some trees and my dad had an electric chainsaw. And I thought, well, heck, that's no big deal, right? It's fairly lightweight, not as powerful. I wasn't really as worried about it. You know, he told me the basics of what to do. This was an old school electric chainsaw that had a cord on it. And that part of it, I guess, is not all that relevant. Well, it does become relevant. But I'm just going to trim some little limbs. And you think, well, that doesn't sound that dangerous. I didn't have any safety gear at all. I go out there and I'm trimming some little limbs on these little trees. And I thought, well, I'd like to get a couple of them that are just a little bit higher. So I go out and I get a short ladder and I lean it against that tree. I climb up the ladder and I reach out. Now I'm in improper body position. I'm leaning on a ladder while working and the ladder shifted and I could feel myself starting to fall. You know, you have less than a half a second to react. I'm falling and I have a running chainsaw. This is all already a bad situation. So I thought, what do I do instinctively? I didn't think anything. As I started to fall, I threw the chainsaw away from me. Chainsaw was on a cord. So it hit the end of the cord and jerked, and the, I threw the saw this way, and it spun back towards me, and I put my hand up, and I ran the chainsaw all the way across the palm of my hand. And it seems remarkable that I don't have a big scar there, but, I, you know, the tissue on your hands is just different, and it, it healed up to where you can't even tell where it happened. But... I ran that chainsaw and it filleted it. It was a very ugly cut. Chainsaw cuts are not like a knife cut. It's a straight line and two clean pieces of flesh that you seal back together. It's like jagged, like 
all over the place. And it was just, I was so lucky that I didn't lose any function of my hand. I didn't cut a tendon, anything like that. But it was a very scary deal. And I waited a long time before I ran a chainsaw again. And then I thought, man, I can't be afraid of this. I just need to learn how to do it safely. And hopefully, none of you guys ever have to go through this. And hopefully, I said a few things that make you stop and think. Oh, I almost forgot one. I almost forgot one that you guys point out to me all the time. And I'm still trying to make this a habit. I have a tendency to put my hand on the chainsaw like this. This is not a secure grip. Like this is a secure grip. I mean, you think about anything you're doing, which is more secure. So I get criticized a lot. If you're running a saw, wrap your thumb around the, the handle. And I run a saw all the time. I almost never have kickback. I try not to cut with my bar or do anything like that. Saw hardly ever feels like it's trying to kick back towards me. But the times it's happened, I can think of two times when the saw kicked back and it either partially or fully came out of my hand. I almost lost control of the saw. And now I'm trying to be conscious every time that I put, I put my thumb around it. And as I remind myself to do that, I tighten up my grip a little bit. So it's a good tip that I got from you guys. Wrap that thumb. Anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.